Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Afghanistan 11 where we will be trying to win the hearts and minds of the Afghan people. Now, uh, last uh, session we uh, set up uh, our game, uh, bought a couple of units and uh, we uh, should uh, start to get moving. So, one thing that we discussed is that these three uh, villages down here uh, can't really be served by any sort of road-based transportation because they are in that one or actually two val uh, valleys here. So what we're going to do here is grab one of our Black Hawk helicopters, grab one of our infantry divisions, load uh, them up, and move out the helicopter. You can see uh, we can uh, move around the map um, quite a bit of distance actually with the helicopter. Um, so first off we are of course gonna uh, go down here and then drop out this infantry unit right into this village. As you can see, the hearts and minds meters, the little heart, um, got increased a bit for this village. Uh, that doesn't show up in the overall global meter because there are quite a lot of villages. Um, you could also hear that little sound by the, the villages are cooperative, which, which means that um, right now we are not getting any intelligence from that. However, we tried, and um, there was a little fire burning, and now it's extinguished. Um, let's get up here. And uh, try and attack. New intel received. ID detected. Right, so that is our first actual successful uh, mission that, or visit to a village that we did. And we do not know now that there's an ID over here. The second bit of our strategy was that we are aiming to establish a fort operating base in, in this sort of area here, so uh, that we can have a nice little uh, setup to, to control all of these three villages over there. We do have quite a couple of units that we can send out for that purpose, but I'm actually going to start with the Husky, with the mine clearing vehicle, because we do know there's a, an ID here, um, and there might well be IDs on this route up un until there, so uh, let's just go right over there and, and see if there's any. Nothing so far. Oh well. So we didn't find any, which is um, of course in a way good, um, but on the other hand it would have been kind of nice um, to defuse bombs because that um, increases the hearts and minds of, of uh, close by villages and actually gives us some political power. Uh, secondly, we are going to take our engineering vehicle here, which is going to build the base for us, that will be uh, 1500 points, so let's move uh, in that direction. We can't quite reach it yet, um, it's out of action points for now, but um, we'll do the next turn then. We can also already grab um, one of our uh, AMRAPs here and uh, load up the other infantry division and uh, start moving with this as well. Uh, so we are blocking up a bit here, but that's uh, just fine because we are having a nice little convoy here. We can actually um, drop off this infantry right about here and it can walk the rest of the way. Copy solid. New intel incoming. ID and detected. And we know about more IDs. So that's good. That I think should um it does have one point of action point remaining. There's not much for us to do right now, but we might as well just sweep for IDs. Searching for IDs. It's very, very unlikely that there are any, but uh, we can at least try. The other things that we can do is uh, we have this supply truck over here and we can actually grab um, some UN8 and try to deliver that to one of these villages. Um, it's a bit slower as you can see, but um, that will just be just fine and we'll start moving out anyway. So with that uh, done we have these two special forces units here. I'm actually going to tell one of these special forces to start training um, a road transport here and that will take um, three turns and then we'll have that and the other one we'll grab in this Chinook and also start uh, to move out over here so that we will have it ready and, and be able to start uh, working uh, around the FOB as we go. We might actually dump it uh, on this uh, mountain here for now because uh, so we can show off one of the nice abilities of the special forces, which is that they can rappel down uh, right onto the mountain. And we now have quite a bit of vision, and that is fine and dandy. Let's take the Chinook, 
Um, and let's move uh, back towards our base. The special forces here um, do have a variety of actions that they can do, but for now, we could just um, put on the observation post here, further increasing the vis vision range, um, and that's going to be fine. This infantry unit um, can't really do anything. The helicopter is out of action point, so we can for a few again. Nothing here would have surprised me. So well, let's just skip its turn, and then we can actually add our turn. So, new um, turn. We can look at the intelligence screen to see uh, what's going on. We can actually see that there's quite a lot of enemy activity. So, there's one militia cadre and one Taliban cadre. Again, the Taliban spawn in from this uh, border with Pakistan, so from the east, uh, whereas the militia can appear anywhere on the map. We can also have a brief look at uh, our political uh, liaison here. This is the current president of Afghanistan, and he has a couple of things that are in favor of the uh, Taliban, and a couple of things that are uh, in our favor, so sort of a mixed uh, ground guy. You can see there are more Taliban missions, and that might be one of the reasons why we already see one of the Taliban uh, cadres appearing, and we can see that there's quite a bit of corruption going on. Corruption is pretty bad, because in logistics, it means that from a political side we lose 250 um, political points every turn. So that's not great. On the other hand, uh, the Afghan National Army training is much quicker and we are moving uh, for slightly less costs. So both of these uh, things are, are pretty good, um, but of course uh, not the only thing that matters. So let's move up our uh, mine clearing vehicle a bit. No mines in that area, which is very great. And we can then uh, put our uh, FOP here, our forward operating base. Um, where where do we do build it? We could build it down here. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Let's just build it uh, right over here. And that is done. Uh, we take the special forces, we move them in, and start training uh, more Afghan National Army units. And in this case, we're going to build uh, one of the infantry units here. It should take only two turns. So that's very quick, and that's a good, um, good thing for us. Why do we train uh, Afghan National Army? Uh, they are a bit weak, actually, than the U.S. forces um, in, in terms of combat, but they do have a couple of advantages. First off, when they do visit these uh, sort of these little tiny villages, um, they will be. Uh, slightly better because um, they do speak the language, they understand the culture, so they are much more likely to successfully gain intelligence about IDs or initiators and so on. So that's a rather good thing and, and we want to uh, encourage that sort of behavior. And on the other hand, um, these the process in this game is actually that the game expects us to have ANA uh, combat units currently growing up and, and taking over the responsibilities from the US forces. It's very slow at first, so until round 10 we are expected to have 5% of, of the combat units be NA units, but it will uh, later on quickly spiral out of control. So we just want to be prepared for that already and see if we can't uh, increase the ANA uh, percentage as soon as we can. The other advantage is that this training uh, that our special forces are doing doesn't cost political power points in itself. Be solid. Over here, check for intelligence. Nothing gained. Roger. People. You can see our fuel, um, we spend two uh, turns in the field, so our fuel is starting to run slightly low. Um, so we should think about maybe going back, um, but I think we might try to squeeze in one one more uh, visit over here. And so I'll just gently fly to that direction and then see if we can't do that. Um, here uh, we can actually pick up our infantry. Copy solid. Start up without again. Oscar Mike. Um, I think we'll start to clear from off this road. Let's see if there are any mines. No, doesn't seem so, that's very good. So we can uh, move up behind that. Would that be enough? Yeah, I think so. Can be solid. 
and let's copy solid. More ID. Um, it would be good to learn more about the uh, Taliban and, and the militia cadres, but um, we'll take it for the moment. Um, this UN convoy, we can just uh, drop up some UN and aid to this village. UN aid delivered. And go back to military. Um, I do hope that there's no militias right in these mountains because that would sort of uh, empower the uh, ability to move around here. Um, we are going to like. get back to base. For now, it's going to be fine. Our engineering vehicle um, is going to do one more very important job and that is construct waterworks. So, you can um, build waterworks close to um, Afghan villages and we have to build one over here, very close to our base. Can well, for some reason, I think maybe we are on the point. Okay, so we can't uh, apparently do that for now, which is a pity, um, because that would have created some income um, from for the next turns. And uh, yeah, we actually uh, kind of need that to to be able to uh, go. On. The Jinnuk, um is. We do have quite a couple of uh, units strolling around here, so uh, we should prepare to um, grab some fuel so that we can uh, refill these guys. Here. The Chinook itself uh, still has five turns uh, remaining, so that's just going to be fine. Uh, we can also expand our base here a bit, but for now that's not what I want to do. Let's just give this uh, one more try here. Copy that. I think we might be out of action points, and I think that's it. So, let's uh, see how things have changed. Um, we have not any new intelligence. Uh, actually, we do know about two militia cadres already. So, there are three uh, enemies on this map. Um, one must be relatively close to this sort of area. For the other two, we really have n absolutely no idea at all for now. Let's uh, see if we can't uh, do some things. So, first off, we're going to bob down here. and. Uh, this mine claiming vehicle here, this husky, is uh, gonna get rid of these, this ID uh, here for us. That's gonna be great because it will give some political power and it will increase the hearts and minds of the closest village. Copy that. So you saw, 250 points there, uh, one hearts and minds uh, for this uh, village. Copy solid. Move all the way down, nothing further. Copy solid. Never mind, let's move back. So that's very good, um, because we are demonstrating to these people that we can protect the infrastructure, they like us a bit more now, um, so that's very fine and dandy. There's... We could... Um, actually, we need to um, get back here. Um, I don't want to run the vehicle all the way over there, so let's just... Stand the infantry on foot. Let's collect it. And then what we are going to do is, we have three units of uh, fuel remaining. So we could actually start to move out um, to these uh, locations, but I'm actually going to move back to the Ford Operating Basic. That has uh, two advantages. Uh, firstly, this fuel um, won't be consumed this turn. It will not refuel the fuel either, but um, at least it's not going to spend um, a unit this turn. So that's going to be good. The second bit is that our Afghan National Army unit should be actually ready next turn, so we can start to visit these guys uh, with the Afghan uh, unit, which will be much um, better at uh, this uh, sort of thing. Let's uh, grab some more UN aid, I guess, uh, and start moving out again. Roger. And let's see whether anyone uh, needs fuel right now. I think this guy um, still has three turns of fuel remaining, um, but we can actually make sure that uh, next turn he's, he's gonna grip, um, get some, some positive fuel. So we're gonna pre-position him. Uh, uh, like there, hopefully not run into any pleasure. Then we'll do this now. No, that's very good. This helicopter has, uh, so this guy has two turns of fuel remaining. With one turn we could make it, um, so I'm just gonna 
assume that we'll be naked and, and just make this one more step up here. See if we can do that. So, you Excellent. So, that's what I was hoping for. There's a militia here in this mountain, so a bit of clipping issue there. Um, but, so, we know about these guys, um, and we could start to try to combat them. But the issue is our regular infantry cannot um, un unload on the mountain itself. Only our special forces can, and they aren't that great actually. Um, and we, at any rate, we don't really have anyone um, right now available. This guy is still in training. Um, these guys really can't reach all the way up there. Um, we could start to hunt them down, but even then, you see that the chance to actually kill them is not that great. So what we can do is get a bombing mission here, um, an F-16 strike, it's going to have a much higher probability, and it's going to kill it. And you can actually see that even though it cost um, 200 uh, political power, it also gave us some political power. So a net gain for us, and of course the militia is gone and, and can cause any havoc uh, from now on. And with that, uh, we can take this guy and actually build our waterworks uh, right now. Copy that. This is gonna bring us very close to the negatives, uh, and I think once we start uh, to move around a bit, we'll actually see that uh, we might actually get into negative political points uh, this turn, but at least uh, we took up. Uh, we, we created some basis for our economy uh, for the future, and that's gonna be very good and handy. So, again, and turn. Okay, um, so this is a random event, um, which isn't that helpful for us, of course. Um, it's the security handover penalty is increased, so that's bad news, um, and that does mean that if we do not meet um, this target ratio in turn 10, you can see this little symbol here, um, we would get an increased penalty. But for now, that's not that bad because we actually do have 29% of our units um, being A and A units, and, and that, of course, is much in favor or in excess of uh, our required ratio. Move up our uh, mine clearing vehicle all the way that we can. It's slowly, slowly detected. Um, see, and uh, there we cleared another ID. That one, um, we came by here earlier, so we know this uh, must have been planted, and I think that was probably one of the militias. We can look at the intelligence. Um, and right, see that there are no two militia cadres anymore. One we bombed, uh, one probably spawned a new, and one might have uh, placed this ID. We can also see that now we have two Taliban cadres, and that's not very good. Um, but yeah, let's get, just uh, kill this guy. He did, and start him with our chinook back. You can see we are very, very uh, low on points probably soon be negative by the end of the turn, uh, which is a problem, but you can see under logistics that um, the we did get some points from killing uh, the militia, uh, and we have lost and gained some points from infrastructure, so I think uh, we spent 1,750 on infrastructure and we did gain 200 from that, so um, for the future hopefully that's uh, going to be a bit better. This guy is now uh, really low on fuel. Uh, we will not be able to reach base this turn, but that's fine. We get sort of a great period of one turn. So next turn we really, really need to be in base. Actually, we should probably could have flown over here, and then that would have been fine. Still. So here, um, let's. We now have this Afghan National Army unit, and this is going to take up and uh, start to move down here to uh, gather some intelligence here. Hopefully there's no ID here. Intel received. ID detected. Okay. So the more we know the better. And we can grab this guy. Okay. This is out of my spot. Um we can shoot for IDs. IDs. There should really really shouldn't be any. It's mainly on roads. But um, yeah, let's do this so anyway. Um, let's go right ahead and uh, train another uh, infantry unit, which will be very handy. And let's then maybe... Um, you moved already, which is a bit of a pity, um, but 
you can actually go down here as well because we're reasonably sure that there are no IDs. We just came by here um, and just deliver you an A to them there as well. Or we could actually go here and, and uh, increase the chance uh, for getting some uh, good intelligence. The Buffalo, the engineering vehicle, uh, I was actually thinking about uh, moving it up here so we could refuel it. Um, but yeah, actually, actually yeah, let's do that. Um, we could also move it to the FOB. I think the next thing that we we'll want to do um, here is maybe uh, create a little extension yard uh, to service our vehicles. Um, and otherwise, we could think about uh, building the road up here. The road would be relatively expensive, so um, I don't think that's a very good idea for now. Just want to check one thing. No, there is a road there. So, actually, I think we can move up there and uh, just just sort of chill there um, until, until we get further information. Four more units uh, that can move. Um, we do have this Afghan uh, um, truck here that we are going to move back to there. Let's see if we can't shuttle the uh, Afghan services there as well and uh, start to train uh, a helicopter. They are extremely handy to to things to my, to my units. Um, this here's infantry. Um, to be honest, right now really doesn't uh, have that much to do, so it's just going to chill. And the buffalo too is uh, just going to chill. Enter. Our logistics. Um, you can now see the positive effect of our infrastructure um, and of the mines that we were clearing. So we are sort of just cancelling out for now. There's the negative effect from the corruption and from um, moving our units around, but all in all it's not too, too bad. Let's uh, move our infantry back over here. Copy yeah, solid. let's do that. Just so. Um, have this guy deliver... Ah, I forgot to pick up the infantry. That's too bad. Let's do the 8. Start to move back. And this guy can actually start to move these guys up. That's a lost turn. That's, that's very, very bad actually. But uh, yeah, my, my bad. Just some trees. Um, we have our mine clearing vehicle there. And I am thinking about maybe going up here because we do have at, at least two mines over there. So I think that's yeah. And we do have the fuel. Uh, we just need to be careful not to run into any uh, any hostile infantry. This guy really needs to uh, go back to base and uh, just chill here for a second. While this guy, maybe um, the Chinook still has some points remaining. So we might as well bring it back to base and in turn pick up this infantry that, that we just uh, dropped and let's have a here to, to see if we can't give any intelligence US infantry again, just gonna maybe see the mines, but that's why they're just gonna chill. Buffalo, um, we don't really have the points to build anything right now, so this one too is just gonna wait for a second, and this one too. And turn in a unit deployed. Be advised, Taliban in the area. And we've spotted actually some Taliban, uh, and they are pretty close to our base. So that's um, discerning, I would say. Um, but luckily we do have some troops uh, around and about. Uh, first, let's move up with this guy. Always clear the, the mines first so you don't actually uh, accidentally run into them. Anyone else? Pick up the infantry Roger. properly now. And uh, start to move. See, we can't reach down here for now, so I'm just going to stay this um, forward operating base so we don't consume any fuel. 
the supply truck um, has actually run out of fuel. It can still move, but if it's not in the base by the end of this turn, we'd actually lose um, a hit point. And we can't quite make it that far. So again, I'm just going to put it in here. And then maybe next turn we can uh, just make the uh, jump over to our main base. Now it's starting to become a bit more serious. Um, we will want to engage these Taliban. Um, now sometimes it's a bit hard to see whether they are in an ambush position and, and will shoot at anything that comes too, too close to them. So what we're going to do now is just drop our infantry off right so that they can engage. Why can I not drop off here? So I want it so that Let's fly over here, yeah. Mike. and let's drop off the infantry over here. And then the infantry can start to get. See, um, even though the infantry unit is our strongest one, it still has only a 50% chance which it did, which it, which it did, and uh, which is very great because you gain some more intelligence um, by that. We won't be able to engage this um, directly here, so we're just gonna again bomb it and gain even more points from that. So, no, the costs are going up um, slowly, but still, um, that was a very worthwhile thing to do. Pick up our infantry again. There's only one uh, turn of fuel remaining. Um, we can't quite make it over here and, and gather more intelligence. So to be honest, I'm just going to go back to base right now. Get some fuel up. And uh, I think we actually have a Chino uh, Blackhawk over here. So again, the Blackhawk can pick up the infantry. These guys don't really have that much rest in this turn. And uh, get more intelligence. So more militia down there. Uh, we don't, uh, we can't engage them now because there's a cooldown um, on the F-16 missions. Copy we that. can only use them uh, a couple of turns, but it's uh, fine. That. Just uh, keep in mind that there's some guys down there, and uh, see if we can't do anything about them. We have our uh, two actually, uh, actually two Afghanistan army units right now here. Um, these guys can't all move very well um, because they spent this turn moving already. Um, however, our armor up here should be able to um, grab someone. Now, the armor up has enough, not that much fuel to be honest, um, but the Chinook might actually support it. So I'm thinking about engaging these guys down here. Um, Though actually the chi the the black hawk might be quicker um, than our amaranth. Hmm. Difficult choice. Difficult choice. I think it's actually more worthwhile to uh, get the intelligence. So grab some Afghan uh, national army units and uh, start moving out. All the other units, um, due to the lack of transport. Um, these guys don't have any movement points, these guys don't have any fuels. Fuel, so to be honest, these guys are all just going to stand here and we are still yet uh, train even more Afghan National Army units. I think I'm aiming for about um, three or four units. The Buffalo. Um, we could think about building some more waterworks uh, going slightly into depth. Um, and there's something to be said about that, um, because they do repay themselves, um, but on the other hand, I'm rather low sum. I want to have the uh, ability to perform airstrikes on um, units that are very far away. And we can do that if we're negative, so for now I'm just going to skip turn. Um, and similarly, the Afghan National Army unit here. Maybe we, we could start to move out and, and check on this village here by foot. I think the fire should come on uh, soon again. 
You know, let's actually do that. And the US infantry is just gonna skip its turn. Gonna be collected by uh, probably the uh, Black Hawk over here next turn. So, hit that turn. Let's see if there's anything new we know. Six enemy units already. Um, that's, to be honest, quite a bit and, and starting to get worrisome. Um, let's, let's see. We uh, did pick up um, some enemy units here and here. This one I didn't know what, what that intelligence is. Um, but we also could see the uh, Taliban unit coming in here as well. So I think the white ones are Taliban, the red ones are militia. So that we can already form um, an opinion that probably there's something here and something here. Um, but yeah. And with that, um, I think I'm going to call it a close for this episode, and I'll see you guys next time.